Hello and welcome to day 10 of Ben and Tim's advent calendar. I'm Ben. And I'm that's Tim. That's Tim. Sorry, sorry, I interrupted your Timness. Uh, I'll tell you what you should give me. A bop on the nose. What? I'd say, I say you should give me a bop on the nose. Yeah, well, what's warranted that more than any other podcast recording? Let's just put a pun on today's song. Is it Blitzkrieg Bop brackets Christmas by the Ramones? No, it's the theme tune to the product Bop It. Yeah, I nearly murdered some people who were playing with a Bop It once, so let's move on. So, before we start getting to the Bop song of today's, uh, <laughs> today's choice, uh, the sponsors, uh, I- I'm assuming all is well. No, unfortunately not. Peter Egan really, really was seething with jealousy that you came up with a better pun. What? Big bread sauce with a hog roast. <laughs> yeah, he said he, he said he could never have come up with something that good. He didn't expect to be shown up like that by you when he's withdrawn this sponsorship. Ever decreasing wanker. <laughs> well, uh, I hope we've got something lined up instead. Well, yeah, yeah, because, you know, uh, obviously we've got T-Rex coming up. That's right, I've lined up Stork SB as sponsors. The margarine? Yeah, Stork SB. You, you, you know there is a margarine called Trex? No, I'm not. Stork SB It's better works better. I'm just going to play the song. Oh, it's the Wombles! The Wombles are coming! Very slowly. <laughs> it's the goodies! <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder where he got the inspiration for this song from. Oh, well, it's an interesting one. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound at all like Christmas by Darlene Love. He does say it's Darlene Love all over it, but then again, it's probably influence of him going out with Gloria Jones at that point. Because this is way more soulful and funky than... Uh... It is, that's true, because, I mean, there's that whole... Oh, this didn't actually come out, did it, at the time? Not, not for a long time. Uh, yeah. I looked it up and apparently it was originally supposed to come out in 1975. Mm. Uh, and it was withdrawn because EMI got cold feet. Basically, it was just after My Sweet Lord. Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Back to Spectre again. Uh, and they were a little bit worried that it sounds mm. quite... It, it, a lot of people have said it sounds like Here Comes the Sun, but... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Those people are wrong. It, it's it, Christmas. It's very clearly... It, it, yeah, it's Darling Love from Phil Spector's Christmas album, isn't it? But what's interesting about that, about it not coming out now, is that, you know, there's that whole sort of pantheon of, like, glam rock and pro Christmas singles, you know, yeah. Wizard, Slay, Greg Lake... Uh, Lower down, you get people like Shawaddy Waddy and so on. They all had to go. And, uh, you know, Naughty Holder has since come up with the explanation. It was, well, everything was really, really grim around that time. And we thought, like, sod it, people need a a laugh. Yeah. What's interesting is you you now get Christmas Bop on, like, albums alongside all those. Whereas it isn't part of that canon, really. But it's probably replacing something they can no longer put on there. Uh, yeah, there's at least one I can think of. Uh, although that was from the mid '80s, anyway. Yeah, but it still used to be next to all the damn all the Christmas albums, didn't it? Oh, the rock and roll pederasty. Yeah, stop it. He's not getting any fucking royalties or it. Fucking, <laughs> he's getting them taken off him. <laughs> yeah, but someone, someone will tut at us on Twitter. Oh, uh, you know it'll be, don't you, Peter Egan? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no. yeah, this only came out in '82 by uh, the Mark Boland fan club put it out. Really? Uh, although it has appeared on a lot of compilations, presumably, yeah. since. Because I've definitely heard this. I mean, this is like CD2, track like 14. Well, what's all this? When, you see, we've never done an Advent Calendar podcast before. <laughs> no. But if we had, we would probably have talked about uh, Make a Daft Noise of Christmas by the Goodies. <laughs> and we would probably have been baffled by Bill Oddie's claim that it was a T Rex parody. Yeah. When it sounded nothing like T Rex, but weirdly, it does sound like this. It does. Which he couldn't possibly have heard. Well, see, the main shame about this not coming out is that because he lost his way, he's fam- he famously lost his way sort of after 72 for a few years. And it does feel like just before his death, he was coming back to. He was, yeah. he was sort of reinventing himself a bit more. As King uh, of the Punks or something. Yeah, I say he's like added soul to the sound, and uh, you know he did the the duet art with David Bowie, and it just felt like things are going right. And then the irony is, of course, Gloria Jones, who's probably a big influence and in all that happening, murdered him. Well, well, maybe maybe not murdered him, but Snoopy was probably in the vicinity. 
Okay, you should uh, really be careful about saying things like okay, that. Okay, well, I will. I will not say that Richard Osman murdered Mark Bowen. Yeah, Stoke SB will be happy with that. Goodbye, listeners. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I'm never going to watch your programme again. <laughs> Stork SP Margarine. No contest. <laughs>